All right, everyone, here's worksheet two for the week. And we're moving into specific types of clauses. So here we have adjective clauses. So up at the top, I have written for you. We've talked about this already. Adjectives modify nouns or pronouns. So remember something from our previous lesson when we had adjective phrases. Adjective phrases and clauses are usually going to be right by, either right in front of or right behind the noun it modifies. Most of the time, right behind the noun it modifies. Um, unlike adverb clauses that can be in a lot of different places, adjective clauses usually always follow the noun or pronoun that it modifies, okay? And they are introduced by specific words, okay? So, if you look in exercise A, it's part of your directions that you have to um, underline twice this relative pronoun, okay? So, adjective clauses <laughs> always start with these things called relative pronouns. And so, I've written them on the side of my page. Remember, it's a video, so you can pause and write those down if you want. Or if it's easier for you to um, look up a list, you can look up relative pronouns and it'll give you a list. But those are the words that adjective clauses start with, okay? So remember, when you're finding these, it will have a subject and it will have a verb. It will also leave a subject and a verb outside. So be careful as you're underlining, especially when they appear in the middle of your sentence, because you want to make sure you have a verb in what you're underlining and you leave a verb outside of what you're underlining. Also, you'll notice sometimes that these have commas. You know what I say about that? Let the commas help you. Usually they're there to separate it from the rest of the sentence. So if we look at our first sentence, we read through there, we wanna find one of our relatives. So if we look through here, oh, there's a comma, we see which. So it's at the end, it's after our verb. So if it's at the end after our verb, then the entire thing will be your clause. And then there is our relative. And then remember, which was renovated several years ago, that was the theater. That's the noun that it modifies, okay? So I know that you're typing these up. So just make sure you are um, typing up your answers in the order that I asked. I believe um, you write the noun first or type the noun first, then type your relative and then type your clause, okay? So number two, look through that sentence. Do we see a relative anywhere? Well, we definitely have a relative and we definitely have commas. So use your commas. We've got a verb inside and we've got our verb outside. So our relative is at the beginning. Whose and whose paintings contain that subject matter? Frida Kahlo. Number three, looking for a relative. We got a comma, should draw your eye, it's at the end. We underline our relative and what was held in San Antonio? The Fiesta San Antonio, makes sense? Okay, so that right there is exercise A. Exercise B, you're doing something similar, but exercise B has one of your exceptions in it. Okay, and your exception is shown to you in your example, all right? So we're still finding our adjective clauses. You're underlining your entire clause once, and then you're finding your relative underlining it twice, you'll be typing it. And you'll notice in your directions that it says sometimes your relative pronoun can be left out. And if you ever find a sentence that there's no relative pronoun to be seen, if you look at your example up at the top, you notice that the word that is in parentheses at the end. That's uh, the word that, the relative pronoun that is the one that is sometimes understood. So you'll have to plug it in where you think it can go. Okay, and I'll show you an example of that type. Okay, so here we're doing the same thing. 
We're going to find our clause, find the relative, and then the noun that it modifies. So if we look at number one, the horse that Christine rode was very spirited. The word that is our relative. So this is in the middle. So you want to make sure you have a verb inside your clause and one outside. So that Christine rode gives me a verb inside and leaves my verb outside, okay? My relative is that, and Christine rode what? The horse, okay? Number two, your relative should look familiar. And again, it's in the middle of your sentence, so make sure you have a verb inside and a verb outside. The money that was missing was found under the counter. So we start at that, we go to missing, and then we get our relative, excuse my dog barking, <laughs> and then what was missing? The money. All right, number three, a little different. So we have a different relative in there. Let's see if we can find it. And you'll notice um, a lot of your relatives start with WH, so that's something that can help you find them. So we've got whom, and if we look before it, we already have a verb, so it means we go to the end, and then whom the coach depended on the most was players. So we'll put that oop, in your blank. Now let me go to an example for you that is one of your exceptions. Let me get down here. Okay. So if you look at number eight, it says, the tree my grandfather planted still bears apples, not a relative in sight. So we wanna take the relative that and plug it in where we think it could go. So read through the sentence. Where do you think you would plug in the word that if you were rewriting your sentence? Give you a second, think about it, and then the tree it would go right there. That my grandfather planted steer, still <laughs> bears apples. So we are going to still underline that my grandfather planted. It'll stop there. So we have our verb outside. He planted what? The tree. So if you happen to have any that do not have a relative pronoun, Take the relative pronoun that, plug it in, and it'll tell you exactly where your clause is. That wraps up worksheet two.